the French artist Adèle Romani was known by various different forms of her name during her lifetime, and used different professional names during her artistic career, but in English language accounts at least, she is best known as Adèle Romani, so that is the name I will be using here. She was born on 7th December 1769 in Paris, the illegitimate daughter of Jean-Marie Bernadine Mercier and Godefroy, Marquis de romans mesmont and was christened Jean-Marie Mercier. The Marquis recognised and legitimised her when she was eight years old, and she became known as Adèle de Romance. In 1790 she married a man with a name confusingly similar to her own, François-Antoine Romani, a miniature painter. The couple divorced three years later, but she retained the surname Romani, which she spelt in different ways, and sometimes combined with her earlier surname of Romance. She had three children, one by her husband, François Romani, and two more by two further men, to whom she may or may not have been married at different stages of her life. Adèle Romani pursued her artistic career during a tumultuous time in French history. She lived through kingdoms, republics and empires, wars, revolutions, counter-revolutions and restorations, and painted all the time. She was successful and well-known, particularly in the field of portraiture. There is no self-portrait we can be sure about, although this painting is now accepted as almost certainly by Romani, rather than the artist to whom it was previously sometimes attributed, Rose Adelaide de Creux. We do not know anything about what led Adèle Romani to become an artist, and very little about her artistic education. When she exhibited at her first salon in 1793, she was described as a pupil of Jean-Baptiste Regnault, a neoclassical painter in the tradition of David. Regnault had an atelier for female students, which was run by his wife, the painter Sophie Mayer. Germaine Greer, in her 1979 book The Obstacle Race, The Fortunes of Women Painters and Their Work, describes the female pupils of the Regnault atelier as an interesting group about whom too little is known, which is certainly true of Adèle Romani. The period from the late 18th century into the early 19th century was a time of new opportunities for women artists. From the 1790s, more training was available, the restrictive rules of the Académie Royale were gone, and the Salon was open to all. Romani was one of many women who took advantage of these new opportunities, restricted, though they still were, when compared to the freedoms and opportunities available as a matter of course to their male counterparts. Part of this greater visibility for women artists found expression in the self-portrait, in which a new image for the female artist was established, feminine and elegant, but also self-confident and professional. Adèle Romani's attributed self-portrait is in this tradition. It shows her fashionably dressed, her physical charms emphasised, but clearly also serious about her profession. She is holding a stretched canvas painted with an unfinished portrait of a young girl, possibly her eldest daughter, Aglaï Aimé, and her palette and brushes are close at hand. Music was already established as an acceptable accomplishment for women, and evidence of the artist's mastery of that skill is shown in the keyboard instrument behind her and the sheet music at her feet. Her classically influenced clothing evokes nymphs and muses, situating her in a tradition of female creativity rooted in the ancient world, and giving the portrait a quasi-allegorical air. Romani painted some classical, mythological and genre scenes, few of which seem to have survived. This fine neoclassical scene with its well-grouped figures is a notable exception. She also painted her extended family in individual portraits and in group scenes that combine portraiture with genre. Her works engage the feelings of the viewer without excess sentimentality, and stand as valuable records of the fashions, activities and social relations of her time. Between her first salon in 1793 and her last in 1833, Romani exhibited 78 paintings, the majority of which were portraits, and it was as a portraitist that she was best known. 
This portrait of a female artist, shown at the Salon of 1795, expresses Romani's commitment to the image of the professional woman artist. The subject here is very fashionably dressed in an elaborate pink silk dress with plumed hat, but is also accompanied by accessories that underline her professional status. Before her stands a bust of Athena, goddess of the creative arts. Sheet music on the table in front of her indicates her musical accomplishments. Open on the table is a book of anatomy, reflecting her devotion to the study of the human form, an essential foundation for the artist, and her portfolio, filled to overflowing with evidence of her artistic labours, literally rests upon that book. The emphasis on the subject's strong and capable arms and hands is also notable. Her hands rest confidently and easily on her portfolio, a poor crayon held comfortably and confidently in her right hand, waiting to be put to work. Romani's portraits reflect both the neoclassical and the romantic tendencies of her time, but romanticism increasingly predominates as her career progresses. Her combination of visual flair, fresh colours, relish for rich fabrics and other visual qualities, eye for significant detail and emotional appeal, ensured her enduring popularity. Romani's style of portraiture with its potent evocation of the character and accomplishments of her sitters and its sense of spectacle, was particularly well suited to a subgenre of portrait painting that she made her own, portraits of musicians and actors. The Gazette des Beaux-Arts in 1914, in a survey of French painting from 1750 to 1820, gave her the title La Portraitiste de Jean de Théâtre. Her portraits of theatrical and musical performers convey the energy of performance and celebrate their subject's skills and accomplishments. They constitute a record of the performing professions in early 19th century Paris that is as attractive as it is historically important. Adèle Romani is an example of a female artist who had a long and successful career in her own time, but who subsequently became largely forgotten. Much of her work survives today, but much has been lost or misattributed. Her life and work in general are in need of further study. A better understanding of her career would illuminate not only her own significance, but would shed further light on the position of female artists in her time, a period in which, in important ways, the position of women in the arts was transformed. Adèle Romani died in Paris on 6th or 7th June 1846, aged 76, bringing to an end a career that had lasted half a century and left behind a substantial and important artistic legacy.